Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. Alright, let's dive in. Episode 6. Come on, let's finish what we started. Okay, so let's make the crab look at the player at all times while he is in his line of sight or in a set range. So the line of sight and the set focus functions are functions on the AI controller. I know I said that you need the character class and not the pawn class for this to work. To be honest, I'm not sure if that's true. It's just that I couldn't get it to work with the pawn class. It might be just my mistake. And again, if I'd be doing this now, I wouldn't even be using this line of sight and set focus at all. I would just find the player look at vector to rotate the crab and use some kind of sphere trace to check if he's in line of sight or not, just like we were doing with the camera. Okay, so in begin play, I get hold of the player pawn and of the AI controller of this crab enemy. I'm allowed to get a controller and then I cast it to an AI controller. This cast is doing the same thing it was doing in the animation blueprint, so it's taking some kind of controller and we're telling Unreal that this is an AI controller. Just make sure you actually have an AI controller plugged in into your pawn blueprint or character if you're using the character class. So now in tick, I check the line of sight of the AI controller to the player pawn to set focus on the player pawn. I also check if the player is less than 1,250 units from the crab ninja. I know I shouldn't hard code values like this, but I just never came back to fixing this. Okay, so if this if statement is true, the AI controller sets his focus on the player pawn, which makes the crab ninja rotate to face the player. And if it's not true, we just clear the focus. Great, so now once we run up to the Crab Ninja, he unburrows and keeps looking at Rayman. Now let's make the Crab wait for one second while he's underground before he can surface again. So here in the BP Crab Blueprint, I created a custom event like this and named it Surface Delay. So once this event gets fired, I set a delay for one second and once this delay is completed, I set the ready to surface variable to true. Now I use the burrow animation to fire off this custom event. Here at the end of the animation, I created a notify that gets fired whenever the animation reaches this frame. And this is what the notify does. It gets the owner of this animation, casts it to a BP crab, and fires the surface delay event that we have here in our BP crab. Then in the animation blueprint event graph, we set the local ready to surface to be equal to the BP crabs ready to surface. And after that, I set the BP crabs ready to surface back to false. So the surface delay event can change it back to true whenever the animation notify fires. And now as we see here, the crab waits a little while and then it resurfaces. We can move on to spawning projectiles now. So first I make a C++ class for the projectile. This one is a child of an actor. And for the components, we need a collider that I use a sphere collider and a projectile mesh, which is a static mesh component. Now we can make this into a blueprint. For the, for the projectile mesh, we use our crab projectile. And I also added the trail we made in the previous video. So now the crab ninja has something he can actually spawn and I do it here in this fire projectile function. So we take the spawn projectile and spawn it at the projectile spawn component location. We need something that's gonna call this function now and I'm gonna do it through animation notifies again. So in my attack animation, I created two animation notifies. 
one over here and the other one over here. That will call the fire projectile function. And this is how it looks. So all it does is casts to the crab enemy so I can call his fire projectile function. Now we need to make the projectile functionality. So the projectile will travel from the crab's location to the player's location, but not in a straight line. It needs to curve around the Rayman. And here's how I want to handle this. First, I want to spawn the projectile rotated to be facing the player. So the forward vector points at the player location. Then as it's traveling to the player, I want to add an offset along the right vector. So I'm adding an offset up until the halfway point between the projectile's location and the player's location. That's when the projectile reaches the apex of the curve. And after the halfway point, I'm subtracting along the right vector so the, so the projectile moves back to hit its target. In other words, I'm just making the projectile move to its target along a half circle. So since we want it to move along a circle, we're gonna have to use either the sine function or the cosine function. The cosine function here works perfectly because it starts at one and goes to minus one. So the offset is gonna be the strongest in the beginning In the middle point is gonna come around to zero and then it's gonna go back to where it started. Okay, so first in begin play, we need to get the player's location and use it to find the player location vector. So we can set the projectile's rotation to make his forward vector be aligned with the vector pointing to the player. Now we need to calculate the distance for the projectile's starting location to the player's location. And then I normalize that distance to range between 0 and 180. This will make a little more sense in a moment. Now let's move to the calculate y offset function. This is the function I wrote to calculate the offset along the right vector of the projectile to make it move in an arc. So first I calculate the distance from the projectile's current location to the projectile's starting location. And then by multiplying this distance by the normalized player distance, we get a value between 0 and 180. Let me explain this with an example. If the projectile is halfway to the player, then the distance from start is equal half to the player distance. Since the normalized player distance is 180 divided by player distance, this multiplication will give us a value of 90. And cosine of 90 is equal 0, so exactly what we need. However, this cosine function takes in radians, so I need to quickly convert this degree value to radians. But we're not done yet. We can't really use our projectile's current location to calculate its distance from its starting location. That's because our distance calculations are made as if the projectile was moving in a straight line, and this is not the case. So if the projectile is over here, for example, we need to calculate its distance from start as if it was over here. So in other words, we need to find the distance between the projectile's location and an imaginary line that's created between the projectile's starting location and Rayman. And if we subtract that distance from the projectile's right vector, we will get the projectile's location where it would have been if it wasn't moving along an arc. Okay, so now to find the projectile's distance to the imaginary line, I use the point distance to line function. Isn't that convenient? And now to calculate the projectile's distance from its starting location, instead of using the projectile's current location, I plug in the formula that we just mentioned. Okay, so now in tick, I have this if statement. If distance from start is less than the player distance, we add actor local offset. I use an add actor local offset, so the projectile movement is in its local orientation. In the projectile's forward direction, I just move it using a projectile speed variable. And in the projectile's right direction, I use the offset we got in our calculate y offset function. I multiply this by some kind of value because projectile y offset can be only between one and minus one. And then there's projectile direction. This is a value that I want to be only one or minus one. And that's because the crab, when he throws his stars, one arcs to the right and one arcs to, to the left. So by multiplying the projectile y offset by minus one, the star will be arcing the other way around. If the if statement returns false, however, so the distance from start becomes larger than the distance to the player, this projectile gets destroyed. Now, back in the crab enemy, I update the fire projectile to set the projectile direction when it gets spawned. This way the crab decides whether this projectile should arc to the right or to the left. I set this projectile direction in the animation notify, so in the 
Animation notify crab left throw projectile. I set the projectile direction to one. And in the anim notify crab right throw projectile, I set the projectile direction to minus one. And here he is in action. All that's left now is to have the projectile deal damage to whatever it hits. There is a built-in apply damage function that will call the any damage event on the other actor. So if the other actor has some functionality built into the take any damage event, then that functionality will get called once this apply damage function gets called. Making this in the blueprint would be just as simple as calling the apply damage in the on hit event. In C++, from what they taught me in that Udemy course I mentioned in the second episode, this is a little bit more complex. First in the constructor, you need to set up something called a dynamic multicast delegate or something like that and assign the on hit function to this delegate. So now if I understand this correctly, the on hit event will get fired whenever this project I'll hit something. And here in the body of this on hit function, I wrote basically what I want to happen whenever this project I'll hit something. I think what's worth going over here is this if statement. So if there is an actor hit and the other actor is not the owner of this projectile, we apply damage. I also added the destroy at the end, so the projectile despawns once it hits something. All right, let's set up Rayman to receive damage so we can check if this is working. So I'll add a receive damage event. We'll take the health component to check what Rayman's health is. We'll get the current health and subtract damage from the current health and then we will set this as our new health value and then we'll print out the value to see if this is working and as we can see in the top left corner when Rayman gets hit the value decreases while I'm on the topic of taking damage let's do one more thing I assume pretty much every actor that's going to be able to take damage will have some kind of health value and that health value will be decreased by the damage taken. So instead of having to do this setup every time, I can make kind of a global function that I can assign to any blueprint by using the blueprint function libraries. Okay, so here's the blueprint function I made. For input, it takes in a health component and a damage value. And just like before, it takes the current health, subtracts the damage from it and sets it as a new current health. Now in my BP player, I can delete all of these nodes and just add in my damage from health subtraction function, connect the damage to damage, the health component to the health component, and that's done. In this video, I would also like to prepare the crab to receive damage because in the next video, we're gonna teach Raymond how to throw a punch. Okay, so let's add our receive damage event. Now let's put in our subtract damage function that we made. Take the health component, plug it in and take the damage. Now we need a branch. Here we get our current health after the subtraction and compare it. Now we check if the health value after taking damage is larger than, larger than zero. If it is, we set has taken damage to true. So the proper animation gets played. And if this is false, we set has died to true. So the dying animation plays. Then I want to destroy the actor. However, first I want the death animation to play. So we'll add a delay. I happen to know that that animation is two and a half seconds long. So I'll just plug this in since that's not going to change. So we have the damage behavior handled. And now the last thing I need to do to finish up this guy is to set him to be immune to damage while he's underground. Because when he's burrowed, that's just a visual thing. His actual collision is still above ground. I handle this through animation notifies again. So the burrow animation at some point fires off this animation notify, which is just disables the collision on the capsule component. 
And then on the surface animation, I have another animation notify that enables the collision once the crab shoots above ground. I also disable the collision and begin play here in code because the crab always spawns underground. Thank you so much for watching. Now that we have an enemy, I think it's a good time to give Rayman his combat abilities. As always, if you had a good time, please subscribe and like the video. Goodbye.